This is yours, Dr. Ramotriti Jani Aliyu. I do wish to express and extend my very warm greetings from the Federal Capital Territory Administration and the seat of government in Nigeria. Similarly, I must also express gratitude to God Almighty for making it possible for us to be present here in this 2021 African Women Conference here in Kigali, the land of a thousand hills. I appreciate you all. It is indeed important that we appreciate all the delegates from different countries and other very important stakeholders that have honored this invitation from far and near to be part of this very discourse aimed at charting a new course for women in African continent in a post-COVID-19 era. This year's conference themes women's participation in building an inclusive and sustainable post-COVID-19 economy imposes on us a task that requires our collective reason, not just to work towards improving the global economy, but to guarantee our survival as human beings in the face of the effects of the pandemic. The pandemic has had a negative impact on economies globally, and Africa as a continent has not been spared. This affected human development index ratings across the globe. In all of this, women are mostly affected as they have to call the core responsibility of ensuring the well-being of members of their homes and communities. Beyond the negative impact on their economic status, women also had to grapple with all forms of gender-based violence, which includes but not limited to domestic abuse, sexual harassment, rape, among other things. Reports showing increase of such we are received at the height of the pandemic. During the lockdowns, in our homes, across the globe, and in especially the African continent, this report was like a wildfire. Even family members weren't excluded in gender-based violence. So sad. Hence, women being the most impacted should be at the forefront of rebuilding our country's economy, values, and our future. In fact, women are bomb managers and organizers and have proven this over and over again. The only fact that is sad is that of the policy makers at the global and national levels are too slow to embrace this reality. At this conference, therefore, we must work to ensure women take the lead and the drive that will thereby lead to the growth of our economy. Our continent Africa desires to be part of policy making and implementation. We must be in the forefront by agitation, by lobbying, by seeking counterpart and support of the male folk. But of course, must include being part of policy making, decision making, taking and implementation. As it is expected, consequently, that women should work on the agenda of gender and social inclusion policy to protect women and female children in our various countries. Some schools of thought are of the view that development and growth of the nation will only be achievable when women and are equal partners in developmental processes with men. While I cannot agree less with this assertion, however, the reality is that in most African countries, women have relatively weak socioeconomic status and their successful empowerment must necessarily connect and fit their labor into the flow of economic development. It is most, or it must be noted that the continuous underrepresentation of women in the public spaces in both elective and political appointments has been the single most important factor hampering on their economic opportunities. My dear sisters, given our population today and the potentials in it, in contributing to the political and socio-economic value of a nation. 
honestly speaking, in any nation, the inclusion of women are most desirous. It behoves on the government to map out workable strategies that will ensure the effective empowerment of women at all levels. Doing so will enable the women folk to maximize their potentialities and further help consolidate the gains and contemporary democratic interventions provides, especially in the post-COVID-19 era. I urge us all, ladies and gentlemen here, that are referred to as the friends of the women. That women, therefore, must be included, must be carried along, must be friends in building an inclusive and sustainable post of COVID-19 economy. I call on all women in Africa to come together with a very strong voice, with the most friendliest of all smile, with a dogged determination. And together, we remain to tackle all forms of exclusionary policies facing us in all spheres of life on the continent. In doing so, we should bear in mind that knowledge is key to effective participation in the political and developmental processes. Especially in today's world, where economies are becoming increasingly knowledge-driven, women must show compelling intellectual capacity to provide visionary leadership that will help African nations defeat poverty, create wealth, create jobs, and enhance prosperity. While doing so, we must also struggle hard to sustain our minorism, to sustain our culture, to sustain our respect to the fabric of our own existence. Consequently, we must argue that position women to have their voices heard in the implementation of novel international policies, programs, projects on the continent might not be referred to as a privilege, but a right. We must be active players in evolving implementation of African continental free trade agreement in the evolution of local, national, international solutions to climate change challenge and in the odious task of ensuring peace reigns on the continent so that their countries across can develop our citizens can realize also their potentials to the fearless, especially the women, but also inclusive of our, of our children, irrespective of gender, that referring to the youth population. Ladies and gentlemen, I still put it to us that we need each other. Just like yesterday, we need to forge ahead for united we are stronger in one indivisible language, no matter the differences, no matter the religion, no matter the barrier, no matter the distance from one country to the other, one for all, all for one. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to note that Rwanda is a global leader in gender equality and inclusion, and that is evident today as a result of this conference and what we are witnessing here in this hall. I urge other African women and countries across the world to follow suit. Nigeria is also not left behind. Fortunately, we have a president here today in President Muhammadu Buhari, who is very gender friendly. As you can see, we are here in Rwanda in our numbers because he is supporting this move. Perhaps we will be the next country after Rwanda if we don't even overtake. We do have what it takes. We have the population. We have the know-how. We have women that are savvy, both technologically and otherwise. Once again, I thank you all sincerely for this opportunity to address this select gathering of African women that are participating in this all to ensure that women's voices are heard, that we are not left behind, that 2021 becomes the turning point, that 2021 will enable us to class, crack the glass ceiling. We are heading somewhere. We are getting there. But united, we are stronger. Welcome to 2021 African Women Conference here in Kigali, the lands of a thousand hills.
This is yours, Dr. Amoto Tijani Aliu, the Honorable Minister of State, FCT, Nigeria. Today being November 23rd, 2021. Carry on. Thank you.